Hello? Can you hear me now? Wait 30 seconds, there's not appears in the chat. Um, I'm going to see if you can, because I've got the little bar now. So, um, sorry about that. Um, this is going to be fun, editing this together for um, replay later. Uh, as I was trying to say, uh, hello and welcome to Quarantine Quiz number two. Um, if you wondered why I made a peace sign earlier, that was why. So, yeah, um, these aren't necessarily going to be every Monday at 5.30. These are going to be when I have time to write the questions and so on and so forth. So, if you want to make sure you're notified about when the next quiz is going to be, you should hit the subscribe button that's somewhere down, down there-ish, I think. Um, maybe, I don't know. Um, and click the little bell, which I have been told since last week has the purpose of giving you notifications when there's a new video up. You'd think that would be automatic, but no. Uh, I think it used to be. Anyway, um, before we go on with the quiz, uh, I need to announce the winners of last week. Uh, and the winners were, with a score of 25 out of 40, Blue Pen. While cheering. If I had sound effects, this would be great, but I, I don't have any public domain sound effects that I can add. So, I've also been told that I do that noise a lot with my mouth, so I'll try and stop doing that this week. Uh, yeah, um, let's get on with it then. So, as last week, round one is just ten questions to get you started. You might want to type these on a mobile or on a laptop or something so you can copy and paste them into the answer box later on. Uh, if not, write them down and just type them up later, that's all you can do. Uh, I should have said that earlier. Cool, so just 10 general knowledge questions. Question 1. What name is usually used in North America for the forage crop called lucerne in British English. What name is usually used in North America for the forage crop called lucerne in British English? So if you just joined us, um, or you're watching the recording, there were some technical difficulties at the beginning, which explain the slightly odd start. Uh, I think this may have been caused by Bluetooth headphones being connected, but I'm not sure. As ever, if you have any questions uh, about any of the questions or anything else to say to me, um, please do put your comments in the chat, which is, there we go, that way. Um, I will re reply, there'll be about a 30 second delay, uh, because that's how the streaming works. I think I could have it faster if I reduce the quality, but you know, you, you need good quality for, for this, you know. Um, question two. Which band's fifth members included Stuart Sutcliffe, George Martin, and Billy Preston? Which band's fifth members included Stuart Sutcliffe, George Martin, and Billy Preston? As an aside, I'm quite tired this week, so if uh, I fluff any of the questions, forget what I'm saying, or anything along those lines, you know, it's... Question three, what word is used for cured meat from the hind leg of a pig? It is related to the French word jambon. That second sentence isn't a question. 
Uh, I can't change that on the fly, so just pretend there's not a question mark there. What word is used for cured meat from the hind leg of a pig? It is related to the French word jambon. I do this even in any sort of instant messaging, lots of things, lots of things that, that are not questions but adjacent to questions become questions. I, I always like to read them in a, you know, ascending tone of voice. It is related to the French word jambon. Question four. Which American airline was the second largest airline in the world by number of passengers carried as of 2019? after American Airlines. Which American airline was the second largest airline in the world by number of passengers carried as of 2019, after American Airlines? So we're looking for the second largest airline in the world. Uh, data isn't available for 2020. Obviously, events may have impacted the size of different global airlines somewhat. We're looking for last year's second place. This week's drink is not water, it's Tesco Fizzy Mango something. It's quite nice. They have not paid me to say that. However, Tesco, if you, you'd like someone to endorse your fizzy drinks, please get in touch. Question five. What word did the mathematician Paul Erdos, and I apologise for my Hungarian pronunciation there, uh, use to refer to children? It derives from a symbol used in mathematics to denote a small positive quantity. What word did the mathematician Paul Erdos use to refer to children? It derives from a symbol used in mathematics to denote a small positive quantity. Certainly very, very few typefaces have the um, Hungarian double acute accent you can see there on the O. Fortunately, the one I picked did, but uh, Gilsans doesn't. So if you ever have to type his name or any similar name, and Gilsans is the typeface I use for most things, so it's a problem. You can tell I'm not making sense this week, can't you? Let's just stick with the question, shall we? Uh, question six. Which virus, named after a forest in Uganda where it was first isolated in 1947, caused an epidemic throughout the Americas in 2015 to 16? As ever, just in case you were hoping to forget about a global pandemic by watching this video, I can't help you. Which virus, named after a forest in Uganda where it was first isolated in 1947, caused an epidemic throughout the Americas in 2015 to 16? Remember it being on the news as potentially impacting the uh, Brazil 2016, the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Fortunately, they uh, they happened as planned. But there was a lot of talk, I think, then about whether they might have to postpone them, which didn't happen then, but of course has happened now. Question seven. Which school, founded by Henry VI, was the alma mater of the singer-songwriter Frank Turner, the actor Eddie Redmayne, and the explorer Sir Ranulph Fiennes? Which school, founded by Henry VI, was the alma mater of the singer-songwriter Frank Turner, the actor Eddie Redmayne, and the explorer Sir Ranulph Fiennes? In case founded by Henry VI wasn't... Oh, no, there are multiple Henry VI. This is the, the English king, Henry VI who founded this school. I think there is an Henri VI of France, maybe? Who knows? Someone can look that up on Wikipedia, I'm sure. Question eight. What word, meaning to move unsteadily, can precede T? 
totter to form an American word for a seesaw. What word, meaning to move unsteadily, can precede totter to form an American word for a seesaw? Or totter, I suppose. That is the first time that I've committed any attempt at an American accent to recording of any kind. I already have regrets. Question nine. What word it used in... No, that's not a question. <laughs> oh dear. What word... <laughs> no, no, hang on. No, that is, that is right. Sorry, it took me ages to pass my own question. You can tell I'm tired. What word used in English to mean a small quantity? That's what's missing. Oh dear, this week's going well, isn't it? What word used in English to denote a small quantity um, and cognate to the word jot comes from a passage in the book of Matthew? What word used in English to denote a small quantity and cognate to the word jot comes from a passage in the book of Matthew? Let's move on from that very rapidly. Question 10. In Japanese folklore, which creatures are turtle-like humanoids with webbed hands and feet? The word is formed from Japanese words for river and child. In Japanese folklore, which creatures are turtle-like humanoids with webbed hands and feet? The word is formed from the Japanese words for river and child. And that concludes round one. If you have just joined us, uh, feel free to just stick on the stream because the early questions, if you miss them, will appear afterwards. Uh, at the end, of course, I'll give you the instructions on how to submit. The deadline, as before, will be midnight at the end of tomorrow. So round two this week is a history round. So, well, relatively modern history. So, I want you to guess the year. I'm going to give you three events from a given year. It's a year in the 20th century. And I want you to tell me in which year those events happened. Uh, I will give you the point if you're up to two years out either way. There aren't any bonus points for getting it bang on, but, uh, but there is a bit of leeway. If you are one year out, as Ken Bruce might say. So, question one. The establishment of women's institutes, the first photograph of Pluto, and Babe Ruth's first home run. In which year did all of those things happen? Move on to question two. The first meeting of the United Nations, the election of Juan Perón as president of Argentina, and the release of the film It's a Wonderful Life. So the first meeting of the UN, the election of Juan Perón as president of Argentina, and the release of It's a Wonderful Life. Save for this round, shout out to Wikipedia's pages on each year of the 20th century, which is where I compiled most of this from.
Question 3. The first Tour de France, foundation of the Women's Social and Political Union, and the birth of Bing Crosby. First Tour de France, foundation of the Women's Social and Political Union, and the birth of Bing Crosby. Sorry if you just saw a quick flash of question 4 there. I'll come on to that in a minute. Chat's very quiet this week, um, which isn't caused by the number of people watching, it's just people are being quiet. So, if you have anything to say, please do um, type it into that chat there. It makes this a lot more interesting for me and for anyone who's watching later who can try and guess what on earth was going on in the chat. Question 4 The election of Tony Blair as Prime Minister. Publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and Katrina and the Waves' victory at Eurovision. So the election of Tony Blair as Prime Minister, publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and Katrina and the Waves' victory at Eurovision. Was of course the last time that the UK won at Eurovision. I think it was hosted in Birmingham the year after that, the National Indoor Arena. Question 5. Entry of the UK into the European Economic Community, launch of the Skylab space station, and opening of the Bosphorus Bridge in Istanbul. The Bosphorus Bridge there connecting the European and Asian halves of that transcontinental city. Intercontinental, transcontinental, cross-continental, something like that. Uh, Skylab, a NASA space station. The European Economic community, of course, the one of the predecessors to today's European Union. Question six, seven, six, six. Completion of the Empire State Building, legalization of gambling in Nevada, and demolition of the Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow. That's the completion of the Empire State Building, legalization of gambling in Nevada and demolition of the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour in Moscow. So that's the cathedral that was demolished by the... I can't tell you whether it was by, by Russia or by the Soviet Union, because that will um, give away a range of years. But um, yes, it was eventually replaced with a swimming pool, and then the swimming pool was closed and it's now been rebuilt as a facsimile of the original cathedral. Now question 7. Discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming. Release of the Mickey Mouse cartoon Steamboat Willie. And the first transatlantic flight of Amelia Earhart. Discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming. Release of the Mickey Mouse cartoon Steamboat Willie and the first transatlantic flight of Amelia Earhart. Steamboat Willie is still in copyright. I think it's due to come out of copyright in a couple of years' time in America. It was the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, I believe, and one of the first Disney cartoons to include sound. Amelia Earhart on that flight was not flying solo, she was uh, a, well I think technically passenger, but I think at that point co-pilot of, um, uh, of a plane she would later fly solo across the Atlantic. 
Question 8. Release of the Macintosh computer by Apple. The death of Tommy Cooper. And recording of Do They Know It's Christmas. So, the release of the Macintosh computer by Apple. The death of Tommy Cooper. And the recording of Do They Know It's Christmas. Tommy Cooper uh, famously died... Uh, Almost live on television, he collapsed during a live broadcast, and uh, quickly uh, ITV cut to commercial, and doctors rushed in. I think a lot of people thought that the collapse was part of the act. Um, do the next Christmas uh, charity single, of course. Um, later performed at the Benefit Concert Live Aid. Question 9. First publication of the Guinness Book of Records, the opening of the first McDonald's, and the resignation of Winston Churchill as Prime Minister. So the first publication of the Guinness Book of Records, the opening of the first McDonald's, and the resignation of Winston Churchill as Prime Minister. Shout out to my dad who uh, sent a Guinness Book of Records through the post uh, to me after last week's records round. I meant to say, uh, all of the answers for last week's quiz are on uh, www.alexquiz.fun, my uh, fun website domain. It has to be fun, it's in the name. Uh, so... Uh, pop it over there if you are interested in how you did. Unless, of course, you are Blue Pen, in which case you, you know that you won. Congratulations. And question 10. Release of Their Sam Satanic Majesty's Request, The Summer of Love in San Francisco, and The Prohibition of Pirate Radio in the UK. The release of Their Satanic Majesty's Request, The Summer of Love in San Francisco, and the Prohibition of Pirate Radio in the UK. So Their Satanic Majesty's Request, a Rolling Stones album. I believe their only psychedelic rock album. Of course, connecting in with The Summer of Love. Um, it's a very music-themed question, that one. Unintentional. Pirate Radio, of course, broadcast from offshore former military stations and ships and so on uh, until it was outlawed. Uh, yeah, that's just the definition of Pirate Radio, isn't it? Good fact, Alex. Right. Round three. Uh, so, yeah, that was... History round, it's a change from a geography round last week. This is, again, like last week's secrets round, a bit of a maybe lateral thinking one. So I want you to tell me what's missing from each of these sets. So they're, they're not presented in any particular order, but I've presented every element of the set. I haven't told you what the set is, so you have to work that out. Um, and then you have to tell me, I don't want to know what the set is, I just want to know what's missing. Uh, if that's confusing, hopefully you'll see what I mean as we go in. So, question one. Jersey, Guernsey, Sark, Herm, Jethu, Breku. Jersey, Guernsey, Sark, Herm, Jethu, Breku. Probably mispronounced that as well. So I'm not going to tell you what set that is. Uh, but I will tell you that there is one thing missing from that set. And that is what I want you to tell me. So they're not necessarily given in any particular order. Just have to work out what is missing.
Question two. Vietnam, Vatican City, Vanuatu. Vietnam, Vatican City, Vanuatu. So again, one thing missing from that set, please tell me what is missing. Question three. We have a long one. James, Stephen, Richard, Charles, Edward, William, Victoria, George, Henry, John, Mary, Elizabeth. So I'll read that again. James, Stephen, Richard, Charles, Edward, William, Victoria, George, Henry, John, Mary, Elizabeth. So there is one element missing from that set, and I just want you to tell me what is missing. leave this one up for a little while because uh, obviously it's a long list might need a little bit of time to go through even if you have got the sequence or the set sorry and work out which one isn't there sorry for the clanking noise there I'm going to move on. Maybe you can always go back to this point in the video after the stream is over. Question four. Speak now. Fearless. Red. 1989. Lover. Reputation. Might be able to infer something here from the fact that they're all written in italics. Or you may not. Speak Now, Fearless, Red, 1989, Lover, Reputation. Question five. Battle, wardrobe, treader, boy, chair, nephew. Battle, wardrobe, treader, boy, chair, nephew. Difficult one, this. Well, it forces me to stay quiet, uh, except right now, of course. Um, but, you know, I'd like to fill in with some fun facts, but I, I can't do so without giving away what the category might be and therefore helping towards the answer. So, just have to stare into the middle distance. I'm going to stop doing that because that is a light bulb that I'm staring at and I'm blinded now. Stare into the other middle distance. All right, that's enough of that. Question six. Chico, Gummo, Harpo, Groucho. Chico, Gummo, Harpo, Groucho.
what's missing from that set. That was fun. Right, question seven. Modern, Britain, Liverpool. Modern, Britain, Liverpool. Question eight, lighthouse, pyramid, colossus, gardens, temple, statue. So it's lighthouse, pyramid, colossus, gardens, temple, statue. Question nine, pair, three of a kind, flush, high card, four of a kind, straight flush, straight, two pair. So it's pair, three of a kind, flush, high card, four of a kind, straight flush, straight, two pair. Ah, something in the chat. Can we have half points for identifying the set but not finding the last element? Uh, no. I hope that answers your question. I mean, by all means, tell me the set and I can, you know... If, I'm, if, if when I'm marking this, I'm feeling really generous, I might maybe consider giving you a half point. Maybe. I mean, you, you've got to bear in mind here that marking is some of the time what I do for a living. Um, so, you know, I've just signed up for a lot of that for free, and so I'm going to be as harsh as I want. Nope, no, not yet. We've got one more of these. Question 10. Doric Corinthian. It. So it's a three element set. Just need to know what the third thing is Doric, Corinthian. Yeah, I did nearly award a half point to one team uh, in last week's quiz, uh, who sort of had clearly got the sequence but hadn't quite got it as I wanted, and I it wouldn't have made any difference to the result, but I decided uh, that I was not going to award that half point. So, you know, on, on only connect in the sequences round, they wouldn't give you a point for the sequence, it's only for the element, and I'm going to have to apply the same rules here. Fortunately, we're at the end of the missing item round, and we're into our theme round, which last week we had an Easter themed round, we're going to stick with the sort of seasonal theme of the themes. Uh, we're going to have a spring round. 
So question one, I really should have finished scratching my nose before I put myself back in vision. In the UK, spring is conventionally taken to begin on the day of the vernal equinox. Based on this convention, what date is the earliest possibility for spring to start? In the UK, spring is conventionally taken to begin on the day of the vernal equinox. That's the spring equinox. Uh, based on this convention, what date is the earliest possibility for spring to start? It's specifically because this date varies that my question last week about the date of Easter, I said that it was the first, well, it's the first Sunday after the first full moon on or after the 21st of March, as opposed to the actual start of spring, according to astronomers. Then again, it's not, as I said, the first full moon either, so it's, it's all just made up. Question two. In Greek mythology, spring is prompted by the return from the underworld of which goddess, often associated with the pomegranate fruit. In Greek mythology, spring is prompted by the return from the underworld of which goddess, often associated with the pomegranate fruit. The underworld, of course, is called Hades, as is the god of the underworld, which always confused me when... I say always, I didn't learn about Greek mythology often as a child, but whenever the topic came up, it, it confused me. We definitely did this particular myth in primary school. Question three. Stravinsky's ballet, The Rite of Spring, was first performed in 1913 allegedly provoking a riot. In which city was the premiere? Stravinsky's ballet, The Rite of Spring, was first performed in 1913, allegedly provoking a riot. In which city was the premiere? Question four. Uh, and again, apologies for my Italian this time pronunciation. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence contains a large painting called Primavera, the Italian for spring, which depicts a group of mythological figures in a garden. It was painted in the 1470s or 1480s by which artist? So the Uffizi Gallery in Florence contains a large painting called Primavera, the Italian for spring, which depicts a group of mythological figures in a garden. It was painted in the 1470s or 1480s by which artist? Question five. The 2007 Tony Award for Best Musical went to a production based on an 1891 German play of the same name by Frank Wedekind. The musical's title is Spring What? Of course, the, the German title is Spring This, but translated into German. Um, but I think it's conventionally known in English by the English name. The 2007 Tony Award for Best Musical went to a production based on 1891 German play of the same name by Frank Wedekind. The musical's title is Spring What? So a relatively early role for Jonathan Groff in that one, which uh, uh, who is an actor who later went on to originate the role of George III in Hamilton. Question six. Which kind of spring is a character in the Toy Story films with a Southern American accent? Which kind of spring is a character in the Toy Story films with a Southern American accent? And I, I want the, the brand name for this kind of spring, not just you know, the bouncy kind or something.
played by two different actors, neither of whose names can I remember at the moment, but the first one sadly died after the first two films, replaced for three and four. Must get around to seeing Toy Story 4. I've heard it's good. If sad. Then Toy Story 3 was sad as well. So. Question 7. Which Yorkshire town, famous for its spring water that in unprocessed form tastes strongly of sulphur, has also hosted the Eurovision Song Contest? Which Yorkshire town, famous for its spring water that in unprocessed form tastes strongly of sulphur, has also hosted the Eurovision Song Contest. Two Eurovision themed questions in this, well, two questions that reference Eurovision in this quiz, which is not what I intended. I thought I'd got rid of one of them. I was thinking I might have a Eurovision round uh, in a future one of these at around the time Eurovision was supposed to be. I've just used up two questions. Shame. Question 8. A spring tide is an extreme in tidal range. It derives its name from the same sense of the word as an oil or water spring. At what two faces of the moon does a spring tide occur? A spring tide is an extreme in tidal range. It derives its name from the same sense of the word as an oil or water spring. At what two faces of the moon does a spring tide occur? Yeah, when learning about spring tides as a child, I thought these were things that happened, you know, once a year, twice a year. But no, apparently every, well, twice every moon cycle, so twice every four weeks, roughly, there's a spring tide. The opposite is called a neap tide. The tides are at their, high tides are at their lowest and the low tides are at their highest. Question 9. The springtime of nations refers to a wave of revolutions. I need to proofread these questions, don't I? Refers to a wave of revolutions across Europe in 1848. Including in one country whose king, upon signing away his absolute power, supposedly said, That was nice, now I can sleep in the mornings. Which country? So the springtime of nations refers to a wave of revolutions across Europe in 1848 including in one country whose king, upon signing away his absolute power, supposedly said, that was nice, now we can sleep in the mornings. Which country? So I should say that quotation has been translated into English from the relevant language, so the, the fact that it's in English should not be a hint there. The fact that, as I just told you, it was in fact not in English is maybe a hint. And the final question of this quiz. Question 10. Spring is often associated with the first bloom of flowers, such as the variety of tulip called Abba, which flowers in mid-spring. What colour is it? Spring is often associated with the first bloom of flowers, such as the variety of tulip called Abba, which flowers in mid-spring. What colour is it? Not looking for anything like you know, anything. You know, I don't want like burnt sienna or any specific paint colour. Just the general broad strokes, <laughs> broad strokes. <laughs> paint paint. It's, a, it's a good joke. Um, uh, just the general sort of vague colour of the flower will do. I don't expect anyone to know this. Um, But you know, I wanted I wanted this question at the end. What can I say? So that's it, all 40 questions. So if you've now got your answers, um, there's no prize. Uh, rather like last week, I do not have the budget for prizes, but if you'd like to submit them, uh, you can do so at www.alexquiz.fun forward slash submit. So it's www.alexquiz.fun forward slash submit. And the deadline for doing that is midnight at the end of tomorrow, which is the 21st of April 2020. Uh, if you submit them after that time, uh, it will just confuse me if I'm 
marking answers for a different quiz because it's just the same form for everything. Uh, so please don't submit if you're watching this after the end of the 21st of April 2020. Uh, however, if it's after then, hopefully within a day or two, the answers will be up on the website so you can go and check yourself and see how you did. Uh, as I said, last week's answers are also there. Um, so why not go and have a look and see how you did there. Uh, right. So that was the end of this week's quiz. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I... As I say, I'm not sure how often I'm going to do these. I might do one a week today. I might not. Probably not going to do one before a week today. Um, I'd like to do one in a week's time. Um, if that's something you'd like to do, uh, let me know. Um, there's an email address to contact me as well on my website. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you want a notification of when the next one is, make sure you hit that subscribe button somewhere down there, I think. Somewhere. Um, hit the little bell as well so you get notifications and as I've been told to say smash that like button so please do do all of those things if you really enjoyed it um, yeah uh, thanks for watching and good luck